The show is about to start. Thank you for your cooperation. Enjoy the show, and please come back and visit us again. Welcome to the Nine Years Podcast. I'm saying this with a massive, massive smile on my face. I don't know why. Um, well, I do know why. I do know why. Sorry, it's Nick Draper here with Stuart Deacons. Stu, what are we, 155 episodes in now? Is this 155th? Hey, Joe, 155th, and it could be the best one yet. <laughs> well, yes, I say I'm not sure because I don't have a script in front of me. It's been a mad week. We haven't got a script. It's always better when we're unscripted, isn't it? Where the show goes, nobody knows. But we are recording on Thursday evening this week. So we have delayed the podcast for various reasons. So that's why it's a day late. And we are broadca- we're broadcasting. We're not. We're recording. As we, we pretty much... Uh, see, Stu, this could go very, very wrong. If what we think is going to be announced isn't announced, this could make us look very, very stupid. Yeah, but that's most weeks, isn't it? Fair point. How's that silent protest going? Has anyone heard it yet? <laughs> um, yeah, we, we believe that Wally Downs is going to be appointed manager of AFC Wimbledon. Now, if you remember last week, I, I had my reservations about this appointment. Do you know, Stu, I, I will wake up tomorrow morning, I will come down and I will have calmed down and I'll have relaxed and my... My logical brain, my lateral thinking will go back and forth with it and I might not be as happy. But at this very moment in time, I am. Do you know why? Because because I think Wally Downs as manager might bring back Wimbledon FC. I'm not, I've, I'm not really feeling AFC Wimbledon at the minute. I've got to be honest with you. I was Wimbledon FC. I supported Wimbledon FC, I fell in love with Wimbledon FC, I fell in love with the yellow and blue badge, I fell in love with the crazy gang, I fell in love with being the tiny club battling against the odds, against all these big giants and what have you, and people that we would respect, respect people, but we wouldn't defer to them, and I want a bit of that back. And I think Wally Downs is, hey look, Neil Lardley for me was a Wimbledon man, okay? Definite, definitely, it was. Well, of course, he was. He was a Wimbledon FC graduate. You just have to look through the players he would have played with, the teams he would have played in in his time with Wimbledon. He was a Wimbledon guy, but he has, he was kind of like a Wimbledon FC in terms of his intelligence, his dignity, his humility. You know those qualities that people like uh, Robbie Earle had, and Don Howe had, and Terry Burton had. You know those types. Yep, Whereas right. Wally Downs is Wimbledon FC in terms of he has that sort of intensity and that sort of getting people's faces and devilment and bravado and all those words of your of your Dave Bassett's, well, obviously, um, your Vinnie Jones, John Fashnews, dare I say Joe Kinnears, do you know what I mean? So they're both Wimbledon FC, but they're slightly different elements of it. And right now I think we, we, 
probably could do it with having a little bit of the latter because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm waffling on now. Sorry, I'm, but I'm passionate about this. As you know, I'm passionate about this football club, as you well know, as everyone who knows me will know. Um, I just think we have missed that part of it. And AFC Wimbledon has, through our years, had that element of Wimbledon FC in it. You don't get promoted the way we have without characters that had those Kinnear Bassett, Downs, Jones, Fashion News types qualities, Ainsworth type qualities. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You had your Danny Kedwells, possibly the most important player in our history. You had your Jamie Stewart's. Jamie Stewart was a Wimbledon FC player, wasn't he? I mean, going back, your Chris Gels, your Danny Okins, your Bear Wack and Fenwells, your Danny Bormans, your Jake Reeves, your Lyle Taylors, big personalities. They weren't ever going to go hiding. They were going to go fighting. They were going to go battling. People were not going to like them. Barry Fuller, absolutely, was a Wimbledon FC player playing for Wimbledon. But we've lost that. We have lost that over the last 18 months, two years. And I'd be very, very happy to see it come back right now. Can't agree more. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I yeah, I go back. Wimbledon, crazy gang. I wasn't around. I wasn't a woman of fan when Wally was around. When did Wally leave? Probably 77, if I'm looking back. It is. Yeah, I think it was around about 77. I'm literally looking now, actually. I think. So, of course, we're obviously now making sure we get our stats right. But, yeah. So, he left. Uh, yeah, actually. So, I probably like 77. Where am I going with that? Crikey. Um, but, yeah. So, I, I started following Wimbledon in 1990. And, you know what? It is the characters. The first thing that got me interested in Wimbledon was was Hans Seegers. I went, my first game against Arsenal, never forget Hans Seegers celebrating a goal by hanging off the crossbar in front of in front of the home end. And it was just, uh, yeah, for me, you know, um, Vinny when he come back, Jones, Bash, Terry Gibson, Alan Cork, Alan Cork, crikey, he never looked like a, a hero or anything like that to anybody who walked down the street. But the funny thing about Alan Cork is he scored goals, but he'd all put his foot in. He'd all put his foot in and battle, and that's why he, in the crazy gang, as it was known, he survived in it. But yeah, I, since league, since I think we lost that league two side of the, of Bayo and all those sort of Danny Bormans, Jake Reeves, we can, the list is endless. I think we've been starved of characters, absolutely starved of it for whatever reason. Um, and do you know what? Yeah, I'm absolutely as Sammy Moore would say, I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, I'm not. I'm not some. I'm not stupid enough to think that Wally's going to come in and all of a sudden we're going to do championship. You know, a championship winning form and get out of trouble, finish mid table. I'm not stupid enough to think that. I still think we've got a hell of a season on our on our hands. But all I can say is, you know, I don't know the managers individually, but we know what the shortlist was. And all I can say was, when the rumours went out about Kevin Nolan being offered the job, I can honestly say. I've never been as flat as I can, oh, flat as a pancake. I've never been so flat. And then, of course, we saw Neil Ardley looking so well and so young um, on Notts County's um, Twitter. And it was just, I don't know about you, but it was probably, I think I've gone from a 20, the last 24 hours, the emotions I've gone through as a Wimbledon fan, ridiculous. But I'm really absolutely, it's something more buzzing that we've got a Wimbledon man in. Cannot wait. It has been an absolute roller coaster of a week, from a win on Saturday to a defeat on Tuesday, to a managerial appointment. It seemed to be so. The thing with this Kevin Nolan thing, right? So, hey, look, you might be. We might have people out there that are listening that have no idea what's going on. We might be the only window into the world of AFC Wimbledon every week. So we should probably explain. So, Kevin Nolan was announced, or there were reports that came out late on Wednesday evening, late afternoon Wednesday that we offered him a, a contract to be manager. And then later in the evening, it turned, reports were that he turned us down. Now, at this stage, we don't know exactly what the truth of the matter is. The club hasn't said anything about it. Kevin Nolan hasn't said anything about it. Kevin Nolan's representative hasn't said anything about it. So we don't know the truth of the matter. It is impossible to make a judgment on something if you don't have the full picture, if you've not got the full information. So uh, lots of criticisms coming in for the club today and last night about the whole situation, about about the people involved and what have you. I, I don't think we can say anything about it because we don't know the truth of it. It would be pointless. It would be baseless speculation at this stage. 
that yeah, is the rumour, though. That is the rumour that what happened. Yeah, so the, obviously what's come out of the press recently, what's come out of the press is what the shortlist was. So out of the press has come that the shortlist was uh, Sean Derry, Russell Slade, Wally Downs, and Kevin Owen. And that's what's been reported in the press, not by the club. The club has said nothing about a shortlist, and I understand that. I think it's the right thing to do at the moment to not you know, show your hand about the shortlist. Um, but that's what's been reported. Sky News were the ones that done the breaking news on Wednesday that said Kevin Nolan had been offered a two and a half year deal, which we'll go into a bit more in that. I'm sure as we go through the, the podcast. But all I would say is Sky Sports is not a Mickey Mouse institution. It's the one that will only really produce stories like that if there is some foundation from a contact that they can verify. So you know you have to think it would be someone within. And there was agent or a friend or a colleague that he said something to, but it was quickly come out that he had then turned us down um, for whatever reason. Uh, we don't know. I'm happy if, like I say, we can only go on what the press, and thankfully the press have given us a little bit of an update. The club can't, so appreciate that, but at least we've got some sort of update. Um, but it seems quite, I think we're quite confident that we we believe that, Kevin Nolan was offered a position. It may turn out he was wrong. I'm, I think it's unlikely. Um, but yeah, it obviously means we've gone to what you could probably argue is our second choice. Um, which, if I'm being honest with you, the four names that we have on the shortlist, I'm amazed it's even a contest, in my opinion. Um, Wally Down stands out heavily. Yeah, this is the danger. We do run this danger because this could, we, in a week's time, we could be told that none of this was ever true. And we're talking and speculating over something that isn't there. But um, we let's just go off the information that we have. Exactly as you say, there were four names that were released that seemed to be in the final running. Um, Downs, Nolan, Russell, Slade. <laughs> and Sean Derry. <laughs> I know. It's not, say that. it's not the best list, is it? But that's not... Uh... It's, it's, you, have to, you have to wonder, is it a wake up? This is the thing, right? I think we, this is why in, in due course, I would love the Don's Trust board and the football club board to not come out and name every name that come out, but you have to, what's the process? So, you know, I'm assuming we only want people to apply so we don't approach anyone that hasn't applied. Was there people that applied and just dropped out? But because I think one thing that I think maybe fans have been, I suppose not disappointed, but those four names, forget the you know, Wally Downs, it's like the four names that have been released, we would have hoped for a higher calibre of people applying. Applicants. So, applicants, that's the word. So has it, I was, in a way, has it dented our confidence of how big a profile our club is? We think our club's a fan's own club and well-received in the media, but for whatever reason... The shortlist is pretty like I, if a league. I, it reminds me of a League Two club shortlist. It's poor. It's because a poor let's list. Be honest with you, yeah, let's be honest with you. Kevin Nolan, League Two. Sean Derry, League Two. Russell Slade, yes, has had championship. He must be 108. He's had like 822, I think, was what I looked at league games, which is great. But I don't want that. I don't want that. If I'm being honest with you, and Wally Downs. Hey, look, he's on the list. Is he should be on the list because he's a woman of man, which is what I've always wanted. I appreciate his fans out there didn't want that woman's connection. I did. Um, and you have, as a coach, this is my and when we go about about the appointment, as a coach, I don't think we would ever get anybody applying who has that caliber of CV in the coaching world. Manager, different, but yeah, maybe it's just dent our ego a little bit that actually we're not as good as what we think we are, and actually. Let's not go back on it too much, but we had a lot of good stuff in Neil Wardley. <laughs> yes. Well, do you know, when you get to a shortlist like that, and I mean, like you say, the, <laughs> the club can only appoint from the list, like you say, of who went in for the job. I mean, their hands are tied in that regard. So they have to pick the best of what looks like quite a bad bunch. Although we don't know exactly, we don't know exactly who applied and, perhaps if there were people that applied and then decided that perhaps the job wasn't for them for whatever reasons, possibly financially, possibly we have to say that we are not a well, we're not a well-off club. We've said this. Uh, we're not lying there. We're not making it up. 
Um, but I would love to know exactly because I'm still we still don't know, and I don't know if we will know. We will do one day, I'm sure, in the fullness of time. But at this current time, I don't know if it's fair to ask. And well, I suppose it's always fair to ask the question, isn't it? Um, well, the club can always what... say we can't tell you. But yeah, but what happened with Neil? Yeah. What, who mutual consent sounds great, but it has to be initiated from one side or the other. And it would be fact because I. <laughs> I don't think Eric wants rid of Neil Ardley, and I def- definitely don't think he wants or he would have picked Russell Slade, Kevin Nolan, Wally Downs, or Sean Derry, or if, whoever the other name is, I didn't say, above Neil Ardley. I think if you offered Neil uh, Eric those five names, and I'm sorry, I should say it's apologies because there's five members of the football club board. So I, I did this last week. I keep saying Eric when I mean the football club board. But if you were to put in front of the football club board, who would they pick out of those five? I think they'd, they'd plump for Neil. Yeah, and this is, and no, again, it's being really fair on the football club board. None of us have been in the interviews to see because we all, we all see these people. We look at their records and scrutinise their records. We hear what they say on TV, but we also know that that's a little bit. Everyone's got media training, haven't they? So we don't really know um, how they've come out. You know, um, it might be a case that Kevin Nolan, if as reported, he was offered the position first, maybe had a blinding interview. Um, I don't know whether he hits the criteria that the football club board released at the start of the process, but we can go through that maybe. Um, but if he come out as the best applicant in the interview, and we've, you know, I, I, in my position, I, in my career, I interview people, and sometimes I look at their CV, and I don't doesn't really do much for me. They talk to me, and all of a sudden they come to life, and they're a better candidate. So look, you know, there is that element to it. Um, I think the Neil Wardy situation, yeah, there's there's mutterings around that maybe Neil had already been tapped up by Notts County, uh, which is why, because there's a, some, Neil, if you listen to what Neil's put on Notts County, which I must say, fair play Notts County, some excellent, excellent social media stuff, excellent stuff, um, things that I think we could learn from um, in terms of the podcast team, Nick, I think, you know, they've they've sold out, they've done us one, haven't they, really? We've, I don't think we could get anything as good as that, so well done Notts County, um, but he did say, you know, he wanted to have a holiday first. So he had a two-week holiday. Does that suggest that actually he maybe knew that Notts County was in there? He knew he'd gone as far as he could? Possibly. But anyway, well, that is... Well, no, that's not the situation because you were saying you were looking at those... So looking at those candidates... Yeah. I mean, do they... I mean, if you're looking at those four names, yes, I'd agree with you. If you had to get... If I was in the position where it, the hire, the choice of which one of those to hire, those four to hire, was down to me... Then of those four, yeah, I'd go for Wally Downs. Um, do they do they measure up against what we were looking for? So let's let's go through. Let's remind ourselves of the um, so the successful candidate, which was this was on the official site. Uh, once Neil Arnold had left by mutual consent, was the successful candidate will ideally so ideally it covers you a little bit have a track record of success in the game, excellent motivational and people management skills a clear vision of how they can deliver success on and off the pitch for the club and a track record of developing young players. So let's see how they match up. So what's the first one? A track record of success in the game. Do we think any of those have a success a success in the game as a track record? Um, Tommy, uh, yeah, what do you think? I mean, I, I'd have to research it more, but I mean, Nolan did all right. Limited time, limited, limited time to judge him. Really, not long, long enough. Really, Slade's done all right during his career. Yeah, eight hundred and forty-two games to be exact. Yeah, he's done all right. I mean, yeah, thirty-six point seven percent win rate. Here's a big one: a proven success in the game. He's not won any promotions. No. And he's won five League One Manager of the Months over a period of, we had two in 2013, two in 2014, and one. Actually, I apologise. He had Manager of the Year. I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a disservice here. 2013 to 14, he won the League One Manager of the Year with Leighton Orient before it all went bits up with them. And then back in 2006 and 2007, he won League One Manager of the Month, Manager of the Year, sorry. But, no promotion. So we've gone from, and I always say, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get rid of your manager, you bring in someone better than what you've just got rid of. I think that could always be a safe assumption. 
So no promotion in in that record. But are we looking for? Is that what we're looking for though? Because at the moment we're looking for someone to keep us in League One. So when you say successful track record or whatever, I mean, there's, basically, there's a, it's a, you can interpret that. That is deliberately, is that deliberately loose? Because there are many ways in which you can interpret all this. Possibly. So has Russell Slade kept the team up from relegation? At this stage, because the names are only released most recently, we haven't had a chance to look at that. But the clubs he's been at, you know, look, you can't argue that he's been at some big clubs, you know, Cardiff, Charlton. Brighton, uh, Sheffield United, you know, um, some big clubs, Notts County. Everyone's been at Notts County. I think it's just, a, I think it's just all us. of them. All if of you've them. Not got, yeah, if you've not got Notts County on your CV, then you haven't been a manager. Um, but yeah, I think Russell Slade's probably only one that I could probably say you might argue. The rest, Kerry Nolan. Hey, look, he hasn't even hit a hundred games yet as a as a manager. Um, his one award is the League Two Manager of the Month. We go to Sean Derry, 200 games, no honours. And I have to say, me being totally petty, Sean Derry gets nowhere near our club because currently he's at Oxford United. And we all know who he's working under at Oxford United. He who shall not be named. Yeah, sorry, but that doesn't even get on the shortlist. No way, Jose. That's a wrestler. <laughs> oh dear. So I mean, yeah, but <laughs> sorry, but no, you're right. No track, but there's, Sean Derry just doesn't have a track record of success. I don't think he's got a track record of anything. Um, <laughs> and, hey, look, and, wait, but then Wally, but then Wally Downs doesn't. Wally Downs last managed in England in what 2004 when he left Brentford. Yep. So why doesn't qualify for that either? No, but this is what I mean. We're, the problem is you're only ha- you are hamstrung by who you can attract and who applies for the job. And I think that's basically what we're having to deal with here. Well, yeah, I'm amazed, though. And again, this would be, I'd love to find out. We had 80 applicants, didn't we? And you know, I'm sure we had some that you know, got Wimbledon promoted to the championship in, in Football Manager 2019. I'm sure we had one of those, because everyone does, don't they? But you have to, I'd love to... You know, why do we not have the calibre? So is it a case that we're not attractive? So we're a small ground. However, two years' time, we have a, a new ground on the horizon. How does... Surely you've got some manager thinking, oh, I want some of that. That club's going to improve. Or is it too far away? Is it a case that, as a manager, you don't look two years ahead? Because actually the, the, the shelf life of a manager normally is about 18 months. I'm not too sure the exact, but I think it's much more of that. But then surely if you argue against that, any manager coming in who wants loyalty, surely we are the biggest club that shows loyalty. We had a manager for six years, so anyone coming to anyone coming to our board talking about loyalty must know that we probably show the most loyalty. If you go back before that with Terry Brown, again, was he three, four years, wasn't it? I'm trying to think of the top of my head. Four, four four seasons. One, any two, any no, other class. Five, five four seasons. Yeah. Name any other club in the football league that can say their last two managers had between them eleven years. Yeah, we're looking at Morecambe and Wickham, basically. I don't even think we're looking at Wickham, to be honest with you. No, uh, so we're not, we're not looking at Wickham. So yeah, Morecambe, basically. So I'm amazed that we didn't. And if it is down to money alone, which we have to be realistic, it could be because as a club, we know we struggle getting the players in because of our financial clout. If it is purely just money, then if I'm being honest with you, I don't want you at our club anyway. Because our ethos should be, you know, what you said at the beginning of the podcast is spot on. You know, we all fell in love with Wimbledon FC because we fought against the odds. We didn't go, we didn't conform to what our other should play. You know, we did long ball before anyone else did it or before a long pass was qualified as a long ball. Um, We did all that. We did all stats. We did all, you know, the people that all these um, stats into areas and that. We did all that. We worked out that, you know, you've got to go put balls into areas. And I don't want to get into stats too much because that been going back to New Wildy on that sort of side of it. But I feel we I feel we had that. We had that until we come out of the league. And it's just that, you know, if it's just about money, then I don't want you in a club. And I don't think what he's coming, if, I, from all reports, he's earning decent, decent money out in India. At the moment, so from all accounts, he's going to take a pay drop to come to Wimbledon. I don't want someone coming for the money. If that's where they're coming from, you're not coming in. So 
that's why I just think that woman of connection and, and what he is, it just speaks volumes. I want someone who understands our values. This is, of course, if, if, if Wally Downs is appointed our manager, because it's still not confirmed yet. We're still waiting, aren't we? We are still waiting. Should it should the news break officially whilst we are recording, then, of course, we will discuss it. But as we say, all signs are pointing towards it. That is the situation we're in at the moment. We are in, despite the fact we, it does seem, whatever the situation is, that a new manager will be in charge for the Rochdale home game. Which is a great game to have as your first one, isn't it? That's a that's very kind for the fixture list to fall that way because that's a very winnable game. Big time, um, big time. So we expect the new manager will be in by then. Uh, we're in trouble though. We're still in trouble, despite finally, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> after all this time, hoping for a win, praying for a win. After how many weeks of the podcast having to talk about another defeat, we finally get a league victory. And then we immediately lose again. Um, but hey, positives. Uh, Simon Bassey. Now, here's a, here's a question for you. So people are sort of saying, well, Simon Bassey done a good job. The players really look like they're putting in more of an effort now. Is that fair or is it just a different type of effort? Because I always thought the players, I still firmly believe the players did not um, down tools for Neil Ardley whatsoever. I think they were, they basically did what they were asked of them, or asked of them. Sorry, they kept, like I say, they were disciplined. They kept their shape. They followed instructions. They weren't going off the script, as it were. I think Bassi's just sort of changed the setup a little bit in terms of whereas Neil would like maybe his two banks of four almost being very. I mean, teams. In fact, look, we we conceded goals because of individual errors. You look back through that those eight defeats on the bounce or seven under Neil and you think, oh, man, every single time you look at it and go, individual mistake, individual mistake, every single time almost. Tactically, we seem to be set up pretty pretty good. What I think Bassey's coming and done, and Stephen Reid as well, who we have to mention. Everybody and if we can keep hold of Stephen Reid, wow, we're oh, laughing. Please. We are absolutely laughing if we can. Um, I think it's just a case of pressing a little bit higher up the pitch, basically, and that automatically makes it look like you're putting him more work rate, doesn't it? If you're attempting to close down higher up and put in a few more tackles instead of worrying about leaving yourself exposed if a player gets past you or moves it around you. Yeah, it's always difficult, isn't it? Because players are not stupid. They know now that Simon Bassey is not going to be the long-term manager. So at the moment, they all know that they're playing really for... Some are playing for their, their futures because their contracts are up. And some are playing for... It might be out, you know, there might be a contract, but it might be out the window if a new manager comes in and don't like them. So I think we have to be sensible and realise that players probably have upped their performances a little bit in terms of work rate. Maybe that ball they would have chased under Neil Wadley because of whatever reason, because of, to be fair, we, 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 let's not forget Neil Wadley was a very dejected character. So you can't help your players follow suit. I think. Having Stephen Reid come in has given a little bit of um, freshness, a, a new voice. I don't think that can harm at all. Well respected at West Brom and at Palace. Um, very good friends, I understand, with Simon Bassey. Yeah, we do. We're pressing higher up. We're playing a 4 2 3 1. So Trotter and Saws are the holding. Um, I think it's about, and again, I, I'm not, for one thing, I'm not going to um, slag off what Neil Wiley did because I think. I've heard too many people keep saying that he you know, actually didn't do too much and he was a bit lucky. I'm not buying into that. Absolute rubbish. Um, but I think we can argue that maybe a new voice was needed um, this season. I think that's what it's had. I think, you know, I, I was listening to the interviews, especially the interview that um, Mitch Pinnock had after the he got man of the match for the South South End game. And it was just something he said. I don't know. Again, you don't know. You sometimes football. And to be, to be fair, Mitch Pinnock, love it. He has no he has no media training. It's great. He is basically wet behind the ears. Says it how it is. I loved it. It was so great. But basically just said, you know, under the new gaffer, they basically play football more. He's he's allowed to play more football and a bit more freedom. That's probably what the, the word freedom is probably what actually you can take from that. Because sometimes when you're in relegation trouble, that fright that scared scared to do something different, you know, is is what does it. And New RD is very much about making sure the formation, your jobs are right, you know what to do. Sometimes it's more of a case of going, do you know what, have a bit of freedom out there. Play as if you actually enjoy playing it. And sometimes when you enjoy playing football, you do things that actually come off 
And Mitch Pinnock, I think if you you know we've watched him a couple of games, he's doing some of the most random stuff. He's flicking the ball up. He's he's knocking it over a fullback. He's running onto it. Stuff that really you don't really want him to do, but he's he's doing it because he's trying something different with a, maybe a bit of freedom. So. I think that's what's changed from it. Crucially, Mitch Pinnock is scoring goals for us right now. Three and three. I mean, you can argue the winner against Southend was slightly fortuitous, but I love those balls in the box, those in-swingers that go towards the far post, always get an opportunity. And we, you, in fairness to you, um, I must say this, sort of during the game, you were discussing the goalkeeper. Uh, reference, he was a bit flat-footed. Has that come into play with that winning goal? Yeah, his feet are terrible. I just, you could just sense that every time the ball went over him, so any time the ball went to the back stick, and hey, look, I think it's something that they, I think it's something that Simon Bassey and Steve Reader really spotted, because every ball was to the back stick, and every time, a corner, a free kick, every time it was a back stick, he seemed to be straight in his feet, his movement of his feet was terrible. Um, so you always felt that something was going to come from that. But do you know what? Yeah, I agree with you. It's fortunate, you know, the goal, the goal was fortunate, but I don't, do you know what? I think with, with wingers, it's all about, and I know from when I used to go down and watch training with Neil Utley when he was down here, it was all about hitting areas. It was always about expecting where forwards will run into, but hitting areas that you want to put a ball in. And that ball, the in-swinging from, you know, from a left foot from the right side, is a great ball. It's, I think they call it the, the area of, of uncertainty, don't they? It's sort of like where the keeper don't know where to come, defender don't want to head it. It's all, all, the, all the plus points are in favour of the attacking team. Yes, it goes in very easy, but it's such a great ball. And it was, I think it's um, no less than what Pennock deserved. I thought he was excellent on Saturday. And the funny thing is, we were saying that he couldn't play more than 60 minutes. At no point did I see him blowing out of his proverbials. He, he looked like, I don't get what it is. Because fitness don't just come just like that. It was a weird thing. I think sometimes when you're not playing well and the pressure's on you, sometimes just look knackered. Yeah, I mean, and it, but we are sort of hitting November, end of November, start of December now. So he has been here long enough that perhaps he has been able to build up his minutes potentially. I must say as well, corridor of uncertainty. <laughs> I know you, I knew we were going to like a word. <laughs> that is, or phrase, sorry. No, no, but the corridor of uncertainty is what they do indeed call it. Yes, that is what it is. Um, <laughs> um, and we also, again, we, we equalise because of a good quality ball in as well. It's an own goal in the end, but. It's a good ball in. Was it, was, it, was it an own goal? Nobody knows. We think so. Um, and then we go on to Tuesday evening away at Peterborough. Tough game. I thought we might sneak a point out of it. Purely because I am a big believer, although my faith is being brought into question now, about law of averages. You know I've been like this. You know I'm like this. I'll say yes. it's got to be a result. It'll be this result this week because X hasn't had this in this many games and Y hasn't had this in so many games. So it's clearly going to be this. Yeah, we don't draw games. Apparently, we just don't do it anymore. Like, what are we now? So we're nine defeats out of ten. What are we? Fourteen defeats in the last seventeen. No, yeah, I think we haven't drawn a game in sixteen games. I think. I think that is sixteen or 17. seventeen now. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we just don't do it. Um, I thought we might be against Peterborough, who have got a very inconsistent home record, despite being fairly strong and towards the top of the table. But um, we've lost. I think on the balance of play, it looks like we deserve to lose the game. Yeah, I watched a game on iFollow because it's great. It was available on iFollow because it's a midweek game. I thought people were of good value for their for their win. Um, they got they had the better players on the pitch. They had the better, best moment of the of the game in terms of the goal, excellent goal. Um, but they should look sharper. And by all accounts, a lot of people were fans thought they didn't get out of setting gear. That point didn't surprise me. Um, but you know what? I don't think one of the things I've said to you quite a lot, a lot of times this season is that. We look like a relegated team. So I've always said to you, the worst team I've seen at Kings Meadow is Wimbledon. That's changed after Saturday. Cause South End now take that honour of being the worst team I've seen, which surprised me under under a manager who I think we've all got a lot of respect for in, in Pound. And um, I, I, he looked like I, he walked off on Saturday and I penny for his faults because I watched him walk off and he looked like he was fuming. And by all accounts, he doesn't do that, but he looked like he wanted to give him a piece of his mind. Um, but. What I would say with the performance against Peterborough is it was a 1-0 defeat. It was a close defeat. But we looked like we had something about us for once. We looked like we passed the ball around well. We moved well. Anthony Wordsworth coming back into midfield. I always find sometimes when managers lose their job for whatever reason, you always find somehow that a player comes back who's been injured for ages, comes back and 
And you think, crikey, I wish he had him when he, I wish New Ardy had him when he was, when he was playing like that. I think Andy Words has been excellent for the games. Energy in midfield, license to go forward. Um, but I thought, Joe, you know I thought we didn't look like a relegating team. We really didn't. And that's the difference. I can live with losing 1 0 at Peterborough if I feel that we put a performance in that goes, do you know what? You can build from that. So we go to Halifax. We then go to the under 21 game. We then go to Rochdale. I feel like we are gradually turning the corner, gradually the performance level is better. And you could argue, if it wasn't for the fact that Liam Trotter should have maybe held the ball up and passed it to Andy Wordsworth in the first half, and if Pinnock was have been a bit lucky and lifted the ball when he rounded their goalkeeper in the second, you could argue that we would have got a point out of that game. And, um, hey, look, we really deserve it, but you don't always get in for what you deserve. I mean, does that just show what we've been saying all along? End of the day... Talk. We. I always remember. I think I've said this on the podcast before. I always remember an interview with Gordon Strachan many years ago, and he was asked about football, and he was just like, "Look," he said, "within ninety minutes, tactics and effort and design, whatever, can win your football match, but at the end of the day, the quality of your players determines how successful you are over a long stretch, and that's that's our downfall, mm-hmm. really, and evidenced perhaps on Tuesday night in that little snapshot of." the quality of the finish for their goal and the quality of our finishing. Joe Piggott has not scored in a long time now. Is it one in 11, something like that? Yeah, it feels that, it feels that way. But mm. Again, I don't I don't think the formation that we play suits him. I really don't. You know, that, no, that's fair. And that's, yeah. and that's just being being honest, you know. I think, you know, we've gone to a 4-2-3-1 and Quezzy's playing at the tip of the of the of the formation as such and Joe what's fair play to Quezzy apart from him getting injured again um I think Quezzy's done that role all right not doesn't get in the box enough but you know what I thought against South End I thought you know that we've been critical highly critical of Quezzy but what I'd always say is we judge it fairly and I actually I said to you I think Joe what he's getting in good positions but it was a hard task because he's playing at home as really a, a one up front but his main role is not really to attack it's really to get the other three involved and then bring our fullbacks in, which we gradually did after we started getting territory. Um, I think with Joe Piggott, really, in a moment, is if, say, I'm saying, I think it's even a big if, but when Wally, when Wally comes in, yeah, his biggest challenge is to work out a formation. The funny thing is, we can't say what formation Wally's going to play because he's not managed for so many years. You, can, you know, But he's, he, what he's going to have to do is get the best out of the players he's got up until January. Um, and it's why I go back to the fact of a coach it's going to need a coach until January. If we're thinking that we can go into this window and all of a sudden magically get these players in, if again, if it's Wally, the contacts he's got, the clubs he's got, I'm sure he will call in a few favours that he's, he's owed. I'm sure he will do. But until we get to the window, we've got to pick up points because if we pick up next to nothing to the window, we might have just kissed goodbye to League 2 and not bo- and League 1 and not bother. So I think he can get, I think he can get extras out of the players and Joe Piggott is one and of course let's be forget you know we're going for this we don't know who his number two is you know it could be an attacker it could be an attacker it, you know he's got his work to so many people uh, I think the rumour was or to say the rumour I think we put two and two together on a podcast team earlier and we noticed that Robbie Keane has retired and he currently plays for the same team that Wally Downs is coaching for out in India that is a two and two makes hundred and two but we don't know who his number two is Piggott does need a formation that's going to get the best out of him. Imagine Robbie Keane. Come give And again, I'm just, I'm just, you know, Robbie you know, we're Keane. making up. We're making, we don't know who his number two is, do we? Um, no, but this is we, true. We believe that Simon Batty stays on. We do believe that, don't we? And um, I think, do you know what? Uh, I'm more than happy with that. I'm very, very happy with that. In fact, I think Bass has got, I think tactically he's very switched on. I don't think he gets the credit for that enough. Um, I think maybe that's, and I actually think his experience with us, his experience of League One with us, is would be very important. In fact, to help with Downs coming yeah. in, if down, if if if. Do you know I think we've in. got to do with, with Simon Bassey? I think the biggest thing that we haven't made clear, um, you know, if you, I was speaking to someone the other day who was who made a very valid point. I think I said to you didn't I as well. Swansea, I still can't remember his blimmin' name. We'll find out. But Swansea have a. a a person very similar to Simon Bassey. He's been there. Every manager that's come in, he's been caretaker manager, but he's always been part of the club. Uh, Tony Parks was the same at Blackburn. So someone who's always been a figure at the club, and when they've needed to go to, 
they've always stepped up. And you could argue that Simon Bassey has done that on both occasions. I think the biggest thing the club have got to do is to make some distinction that that's what he's going to do. That might be the role. He's always going to have a job. I know it's dangerous to say you're always going to have a job at this club because that's always dangerous. But ultimately, everyone at the moment looks like he is just as much the problem of us being in the trouble we are as Neil Wardy and Neil Cox is. And that's it's sort of gone where it's under his watch that he did that. We have to maybe accept and maybe it will come out in the wash at some point that he had a say, but he didn't have the final say. You know, he wasn't, he was a first team coach. He wasn't the assistant manager. So you'd, you'd have to think that the hierarchy would go Neil Wardy, Neil Cox, Simon Bassey. Even though they all know, they, we all know they discussed it. The final decision would come from Neil Wardy, but you'd have to also think that also Cox would have some sort of overriding thing on that. So maybe we're seeing the team that Simon Bassey's always wanted to put out. It ain't too different. Let's be honest with you. The team ain't too different. What well, it was under Neil Wardy, but the formation is the difference and the intensity and how we're going about it is slightly different. Is it Alan Curtis at Swansea? That's the one. That's the one. Mm-hmm. And I think, Joe, you know I've got no problem with that. I really haven't. And I think it's right, if I'm being truthful. I've got, hey, look, I've, I know a lot of people at the club who speak so highly of, of Simon Bassey. All the deals I've had with him, I've never had a problem. Never had a problem. I've all... Yeah. <laughs> I'm his kit sponsor. I'm his exactly, sponsor, but I don't, know, so. I don't know about you, if you talk about football, you know, I... Hey, look, I've heard, I've heard a lot of stuff about Neil Cox and, and stuff. I've sponsored Neil Cox's kit for three years. Um, we had some great chats about football stuff that I won't... You know, I've, I've spoke to you about about stuff, but he spoke honestly about the club and stuff like that. And I've been really, really flattered that I've had to, been able to share some evenings and actually have an understanding. He's got some great stories by where Neil Cox as well. And with that, Simon Bassey, you, you, he's so well-respected. In the club, I think some of the stuff that was said a little bit about him was a little bit out of order, if I'm being truthful. But I think also the club have to make it clear why they kept it on. I think it's because they want that, they want that consistent, some, some sort of consistent message what Wimbledon is about, which is ironic because we've been talking about how we don't think that is at the moment. But he's been with us since day dot. Yeah, yeah, he's been with us from CCL. He's a link through That's from CCL word. to now, and I think that. That is very important, absolutely. Even though at this current time, as we say, perhaps we've lost a bit of a little bit of our identity, perhaps. Um, just on Quezzy as well, we talked about you talked about Quezzy there. It's, I, I wanted to be clear because you sort of said crit, being critical of Quezzy. Um, I've, I personally, I have no issues with Quezzy. I, I, I have issues with players that I perceive aren't putting effort in, and I'm never going to ever level that at Quezzy. Do you know, though, when you talk about the role he's performing at the moment, uh, Craig Tanner was a name that came to mind. Yeah. Seems to be a striker, a striker that would just be forever wanting to be the one off the striker, that didn't want to be in the box, that wanted to be linking things. And Quezzy, when he first joined us and before we had the really bad injuries, he he was a terror. He was an absolute terror for defences. He wouldn't give them a break. He wouldn't give them a rest. He'd be running at them. He'd be getting in the box, what have you. And it looks just does look like he's had to adapt in the same way. And we, oh, we've, we've talked about this before, so let's not go into length about it. But the same way Michael Owen was chatting and he had to adapt his game. And Quezzy probably can adapt his game to that role deeper, that deeper lying role. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for us at the moment because we need him to be up top. That's just the way it goes. Um, I don't know if there's anything to add to no, that. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. Just me musing, shooting the breeze as we do <laughs> on this podcast each and every week. Uh, right, because we don't have a script, there is we're in big danger. I say we, I'm in big danger of missing something. And it's going to be a bit scattergun from here on out. But I do want to say, at the end of this week's show, you will be hearing a new song from these fine gentlemen. Great guys, these fine gentlemen. Absolutely great guys. And... You know what's really funny in a way, actually, is like, you know, they've been on board now. I think it's what the first season they've been on board of of um, being involved with us and, and kind of sponsoring us and stuff like that. But they've actually, you know, we've been flattered that, you know, through the years we've managed to become more successful. And, and um, our listeners now are really, really healthy. And we we thank everyone for listening, whoever has or does or consistently does. And maybe apologize also for me being so stupid and giving such rubbish information. But the great thing about these fine gentlemen is that when we first knew them, that they had some really good music. But now that they've got an album out and gigs all the time over in America and in Indianapolis and stuff like that, it's actually 
it's in a way they've mirrored what we've been doing. Isn't it? We're not going to have an album, by the way, so don't worry about that. Nick, Nick and I, Nick what? and I, can't what? Sing. Yeah. What? That was a condition <laughs> of my new contract. But really, Joe, you know I couldn't, I couldn't be more happier than the guys. And um, it's great; it's available. I know a couple of the songs that we, you know, me and my wife, have listened to in the car. Really good stuff. So, um, if you haven't listened to them, please do. They really are. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm rubbish on my sort of. Um, music in terms of what they come under, but I would say rock would be definitely what they come under, would have thought. Um, but, you know, those days when you watch Wimbledon and you just think, ah, they haven't put it in again, listen to these guys. They'll definitely, um, yeah, they'll definitely put you out of your misery. Absolutely. So the album, on their Facebook page, facebook.com slash these fine gentlemen. And the album Old Flames is available now. You can find it also on Apple Music and Spotify we shall play their song, one of their new songs off the album, Old Flames, at the end of the show. Right. The other thing, many things to do. Oh, my word. Right. Uh, what should we do next year? Should we play a game? Why not? Before we get on to a question I wanted to touch on that we got from Twitter, um, which is going to take us back to football. Right. Game. Right. We've got a bit of a problem. Oh, I win. <laughs> Well, we can't really do Neil or no Neil anymore because we're pretty. We it's not confirmed, of course, but we're expecting Wally Downs to be our new manager, so we need a new game. Oh, okay. I've yeah. basically made up. I've made up a game on the spot. It doesn't even make sense. It makes less sense than Neil or no Neil does. Great as games a of Wally, don't we? Well, I've got. Where's Wally? I've come up with one. Yeah, that was too obvious. You see, Damn. I thought that's just, and also it's audio, so it'd be a bit like. Well, we could basically we could have done Poli on Go again, just yeah. put it. Where's Wally? We could have done. No, Damn. Um, I've gone for something. So ridiculous, or not ridiculous, just out there. So I've called the game Wally with a trolley. <laughs> I love when you have no time to think. That's funny as anything, that is. Wally with a trolley. Are we going, Wally with are a trolley. It gets, it gets worse. <laughs> yes, he has gone shopping. Okay, so he's gone shopping. So you can picture Wally <laughs> with a trolley. Tesco's. Going through the arts, the supermarket arts, of his supermarket of choice, of course. Stu. I don't Sorry, know. It yes. could be Tesco's, it could be Sainsbury's, it could be Waitrose. We don't know. He's managing AFC Wimbledon. I'd say with our budget, <laughs> he wants to be looking at Audi and Lidl. Let's be honest. But he has bought five items from this supermarket. This supermarket is full of former Wimbledon players. Like it. Okay? Yes. Former Wimbledon players. And he has bought five former Wimbledon players. <laughs> They are all former Wimbledon Academy graduates. Hey. Do you see? Do you see what I've done there? Track record. For the first yeah, one. Yeah, track record developing yeah. youth players. And exactly. Wally Downs was our first ever apprentice, I believe. So, as Wimbledon FC. So, he's picked five. I would like you to list his five purchases in order from most to fewest in terms of their appearances for Wimbledon. Okay. Okay. You get one shot at this. You have to rearrange these five names into order, highest to lowest for their appearances for Wimbledon, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the names are, I'm going to do this alphabetically by first name, which I haven't done, so I'm going to have to do it on the spot. Chris Perry. Yeah. Joby McEnough. Yeah. Neil Sullivan. Yeah. Ryan Sweeney. Yeah. And Will Nightingale. So most appearances. From most to fewest, most yes, to please. Fewest. So Will, we know, had 50 because he was celebrating that recently. So, Joby. So let's go with the ones that I think have the least. So I would go with Joby McEnough as. Uh, no, actually, no, like, I would go with Ryan Sweeney as the lowest. Okay. Then I would go with Joby McEnough. Right. You're doing this in the reverse order as I asked, but never mind. <laughs> sorry, it's my, it's my logic. So who else have I got left? Sorry, so I've got Chris Perry, Neil Sullivan, and... And Will. And Will. So Will would be third. Second, mm, this is... So Neil is older and he was at Plough Lane. What's Chris Perry... So Chris Perry's second and the most appearances, Neil Sullivan. Stu, I think you're going to want this game to reappear next week. <laughs> you are 100% correct. <laughs> it is incredible. Oh. 
Five out of five, Stu. Although you did it in the wrong order. I know, but that's, that's but, the best order I could do because I had to think. And every reason I, I, you know, every reason I know that is I, I watched Neil Simon play reserve football in the old Combination League. Um, at two o'clock kickoffs at Plough Lane, I remember them very well. So, yeah, that's just my logic that I remember Neil got into the team before that. Some great names in there. Joe McEnough, who's still scoring goals for late yeah, on in, in, the in the conference. conference isn't he? Mm. Well, fun if Will Knight to go, you were right. I think it's 50 league appearances, though. I think in total he's got 60, over 60 now in all competitions for us. So, but yes, Neil Sullivan, 181. Chris Perry, 167. Will, 62. Joby, 32. And then Ryan Sweeney, unlucky with 13. So, um, cool. yeah, I mean, it's got, I mean, why that game is called Wally with a trolley in some sort of <laughs> supermarket dash, I don't know. But I had grandiose ideas, Stu, of having a game where you had, I'd give you like, the names of the players and you had to work out which ones would add up to a certain amount of money he had to spend. But that was far too complicated. This is fine. We can do this every week with different, not the same, exactly the same, obviously, because it would just be boring, but I'm waffling. Anyway, right. We have a question on Twitter. I do not want to spend a great deal of time on this, but I did promise that I, we would talk about this on the podcast. Um, because it does tie in going, just going back to the point of Wally Downs quickly. So Mark Lodge at Mark. Oh, come on. I'm going to say it wrong. This is old O'Grolf all over again. <laughs> that one again. At Mark Modito Joy. Mark Mode to, oh, Mark Mode to Joy. There you are. Yeah. Mark, Mark Lodge. Uh, he asked, so my wonderful at nine years podcast team. Thank you very much. Wonderful. I like that. Cool, Should we call ourselves that for now? Cool. The wonderful nine years podcast. Cool, worse. Yeah, we've been called a lot worse. How are you feeling about the current situation? Uh, at the time he asked this, this was la- uh, this was on Wednesday evening. So I think we can safely say we're feeling a lot better right buzzing, now. Buzzing, buzzing. Than we have been pretty much since a week, basically since the last podcast. I think Eric and Ivor are total legends. Uh huh. I'm not going to disagree with you on that one. The brains and heart of AFC. I'm sure. Come on, Mark. AFCW. Come on. They're not the brains and heart of Arsenal. But who the hell is running the football side of things and communications? Well, the football, I think this is the key thing. The football side of things is something that has been cropping up on various guestbooks, social media, whatever, and things like that. Now, Dave Bassett has in the past been helping us. Alan Pardew apparently has been helping us out this time in terms of employing a new manager. And Dave Bassett has been championing Wally Downs in the lead in the last what say a couple of months all right so is that's kind of our answer i think that's who the board are looking to for the football side of things again we don't know we hear glimpses don't we i think a head of recruitment is being employed at some point that has been minuted don't trust meetings but for the time being i think basically we've got dave bassett there and we've got alan pardew there as our sounding boards on football matters. Don't forget as well, Joe Palm's very, like, he's young, but he's quite experienced. You look at the clubs he's been with, and he's very switched on with his football knowledge. So it is there. I think we're quite rightly just bringing in some expertise that naturally we won't have. Yeah. Can we add to that? No, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, hey, look, the, f- the football club is evolving. It, it has to. Um, you know, and Joe Palmer coming in, experience at Sheffield Wednesday, experience at the Russian club that I'm going to forget now. But, you know, it all builds up experience, doesn't it? You know, Shakhtar Donetsk, who... That's the one. I, yeah. We were in the Champions League. We were in the Champions League. So, you know, the experience of that. And I think I think what we have to accept is that Paralane is on the horizon. A lot of a lot of energies and, um, yeah, passion and work has gone into that. And... I think we can accept that on the football side of it, it's, it's suffered a little bit, you know, with a dip in form. And I think the head of recruitment, as you said, rightly said, has been is being looked at. We know our recruitment has been absolutely shocking for two or three years now. So, you know, Waddy coming in reportedly um, would add again to that experience. You know, look at the clubs he's been at. You know, he's been at Reading, Crystal Palace, Southampton, West Ham, Wimbledon. He was back at the old Wimbledon. You know, the women we all we all we all fell in love with. Um, that's very much just very quick off point. One thing I would say is actually is, as we all know, Wimbledon we fall in love with. We have to accept that we've got some youngsters who don't know Wally, 
Yeah, there's going to be lots of people listening right now that don't know yeah. anything other than AFC Wimbledon. So, I mean, which is which is absolutely fine. Yeah. But as we're saying, for you and I, yeah. brought up and we're learning about Wimbledon when you're younger, you learn about Wimbledon FC. For you and I, this is where we're going down the line. Of course, this is a brave new world for many of our listeners. Yeah, and also a different thing that sort of happened in my head. I'm imagining Simon Bassey watched Wally Downs at Plough Lane. So you have to wonder, actually, way Possibly. will Simon Bassey will be working with one of his He's not his idols as such, but maybe one of his heroes off the pitch because what well, he was a character on the pitch, wasn't he? So, um, yeah, just coming to my head because, of course, this is breaking news as we know it. You know, it's, um, yeah. Which might not actually be news. Well, if it's not, to, if it's not news, we're going to have to, <laughs> the if, it's not news, if it's not news, we're going to have to cut a hell of a lot of our podcast. So if, you, if you've only seen 15 minutes appear on your, your download, yes, what he hasn't signed. However, it will still be a great 15 minutes, <laughs> yeah. and it's not all about length. But, uh, but I must yeah, point out. I think it's, do you know what? I think, the head of, I think the head of recruitment, head of recruitment coming in, I think in time we do need someone above all that, you know, uh, chief scout. I don't know. There's loads of, I think we have to evolve. The club has to evolve. And um, hey, look, if it evolves before Plough Lane, before the finances are there, because finances do dictate a lot of that. Um, we just have to wait and see. But hey, look, do you know what? Every manager that has come into Wimbledon has evolved the club. So we you know we, we go back to the days of Dave Anderson when he came in. You know, Dave brought all his Hendon guys in, but quickly took quickly got rid of a lot of the old Danny Oakins and Kevin Cooper, if you remember. Do you know what I mean? And then when Terry Brown came in, again Terry put another level on top of it and done a lot of stuff. Neil Wardy come in and changed a lot of stuff in the training and made us more professional. You just now have to hope the next manager, which we believe is Wally Downs, will continue to that. It's a, it's a, we're going to evolve, and um, I can't wait for. I, I must say, I can't believe I said I can't wait for the next chapter because yesterday I was literally in turmoil, absolute turmoil. So Twenty four hours of football. Uh, turmoil might be a little strong, Stu. I was a little bit in my football world. The only thing that kept me sane was my son, because he didn't know who Wally was. I have to say, by the way, my wife made a, my wife made the best comment ever, which has totally shut me up when I said to my son, I thought, Thomas, we are going to have a Wally as manager. And she repeated, that's all right, you have a Wally as a dad. Priceless. Nailed it. Nailed it. But she, Speaking she's of... funny. By the way, sorry. Did, <laughs> Lorraine is just like, she can't believe that we're going to have someone called Wally. She's still in denial about New Ardy, but she just thinks it's funny we're going to have someone called Wally. Unfortunately, what doesn't play well for Wally Downs is his name, because if you're a team in a relegation battle, having a manager called <laughs> Wally yeah. and Downs, oh, that's brilliant. as I put on Twitter, headline writers around the country are salivating at this point. But anyway, I must point out to you, Lorraine is correct. <laughs> Your son, Thomas, does have a Wally for a dad. Shakhtar Donetsk is in the Ukraine. So I've been dying to say that for about it seems like five. It's the same now. way, though, isn't it? If you go across, if you get to Gatwick and you sort of head that way, you're going to come across that country eventually. Yeah. Okay, there's logic there somewhere. I don't know. Plymouth and Portsmouth is a local, local derby, derby, of course. Local derby. Uh, but you're right. The club will constantly evolve, Stuart. And as we know, evolution is a mystery, full of change that no one sees. Uh, we have some bits and pieces to tidy up. Uh, we won't look too much ahead to um, Halifax that anyway. on the weekend. No, because we're going to... Um, mm, Halifax is a... Uh, you know, they're growing that they're growing that community in Halifax. <laughs> they're um, building building society. Oh, <laughs> give it. <laughs> right. Um, music quiz. If you recognise the music at the start of this show, if you don't recognise the song at the start of this show, then I'm sorry, what's going on? Um, but this week... Last week, sorry, we had lots of responses and I've got lots to get through. So thank you to M Stage Boy at Dog with a Bone, Baylor Han at Baylor Han One, but we'll come back to it in a moment, Jerong Don at Style Dragon, and Stuart Rolf at Old O'Grolf, who all correctly said it was a semi charmed life by Third Eye Blind. And so they've added some comments. Jerong Dong has added good episode, gents. Thanks. As, thank you very much. Um, Baylor Han messaged us. I'm really sorry, Baylor. Did you see this on Twitter, Stu? No. I'm really sorry, Baylor. This is my official apology because I think I I assumed your gender identity. So I, because the name rhymes with Layla and I assumed it was a female name, it's it's really not. 
Um, as Baylor says here, really appreciate the shout out in this week's podcast. I hate to be a bother, but I am more John Cena than Alexa Bliss. Love it. <laughs> I get it a lot. Hungarian name, all that. So thanks. Yeah, sorry, Baylor, but thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining in with the music quiz over the last few weeks. And I will never say that to you again. Um, it might be the only instance where I will accept somebody being more John Cena than Alexa Bliss, because as we know, Alexa Bliss is awesome. And um, I wish she could be our manager. <laughs> no, I'm not going to no. get involved in that one. No. Next. Uh, this Sunday. Go on, sorry. No, next in terms of before I get myself in trouble. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, coming up the next Sunday. This Sunday, Sunday the 2nd of December, the ladies have got a big cup tie. Hosting Portsmouth at Colston Avenue in Carl Shulton. So if you can get along free entry down to Colston Avenue to support the ladies for a two o'clock kickoff, I'm just going to double check that one. But yes, uh, ladies definitely, definitely deserve our support. So I can't make it to Halifax. It's really frustrating. So I will head down to Carl Shorten instead. Two o'clock kickoff indeed. So I'll look forward to seeing you all down there. Um, feel free to give me all the usual grief and abuse that I deserve for the podcast. I will <laughs> gladly accept it. I may join you, by the way. Um, I may join you. I'm, I'm on my way to... Because the Wimbledon lights go on. The Wimbledon Town Centre um, has the annual event where they close off the town. And they do all the lights going on. They're going to be fireworks. Nice. So hopefully there'll be fireworks on the pitch as well. Hey, you know, so I may come and join you on route um, down at um, okay. Carl Shorten now, isn't it? It is Carl Shorten indeed. So that's all good. Um, so, yes. I th- uh, what else was there? Something else? Oh, Halifax. Uh, FA Cup. Yeah. Um, we don't know. We should win. We're, we might lose. It's a tough game. It's on TV because they expect an upset. But it's a good old-fashioned cup tie. Memories of Curzon Ashton will come flooding back straight away. Uh, Stu just gives a scoreline prediction. Uh, I think we're going to win about 2-0. I said that against Harringay and we made very hard work of it. Yeah, but I said to you Harringay would be tough. Um, I think this game is a totally different game, actually. Um, I think I think we'd be a bit more up for it. I think we'd be a bit more organised, potentially have a bit of a feel-good factor with our manager, who won't be there because, by all accounts, he's still in India. Um but, um, yeah, I think we'll win. Um, even, even if we don't, I think we're going back to a replay. Their record, their away record is not great. Uh, the home record ain't great either, to be honest with you. So um, I'm expecting a win and a third round visit again, hopefully to a big club. Money, money, money. Yeah, we really... We do, do you know what, though? The way this is going to do, this will be the year we get to the third round of the FA Cup and we get Mansfield at home or someone. On, you know, well, it won't be Mansfield, but you know what I mean. I think they're out. They are out because Latte was going to against them. <laughs> just of all the teams, I was just thinking of a team that's really just crap, and it was Mansfield. Yeah, he scored a hat trick with a great lob, didn't he? And then celebrated like um, it was a friendly. What do you expect, kind of thing? Uh, I think that is it. I'm really sorry if I've missed something, guys. It's been a long week, and I've not scripted the show. But I think that brings us to an end. It's FA Cups. So there's no league action, so a break from that. We are still got work to do in the league. Of course, seven points of drift of safety, but. Eight, if you include goal difference at current time, but happier times ahead, we hope. So um, I'm not done, even done a. What are the business club going to do this week? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I've got literally nothing. Oh, they're going to go. Um, you know those like pedalo type things you get in Hyde Park that are made. They look like swans. You know those things. Yes. Yeah, they're going to do that with um, uh, Jeremy Goss, the former Norwich City winger. What a name! Great goal, at Bayern Munich. For Norwich. And Anna Anfield, the last goal in front of the old cop. Of course. And don't forget, um, Lee Finch and Titch are going to be on Lust Sport Radio this Sunday. Um, who are gonna, Fantastic. And, and let's be fair, whoever's listened to that radio show over the last um, month will know that it's been hardly, hardly, hardly. Hey, it's going to be about a new manager, hopefully, so do tune in. Very well said. That is it from us. Updates from Halifax at Nine Wild Podcast. It was also live on the television on BT Sports as well. This, now you are listening to... Well, I haven't actually made my mind up which song, but let's go. It's their new single off their new album. It's called Choke. This is These Fine Gentlemen. That is what you will hear when I stop speaking at long last. All to say, thank you very much for joining us this week. Do not forget, if you are listening to this on Friday, how have I forgotten this bit, Stu? If you're listening to this on Friday, you still have until 11.59 this evening to get your vote in for the Don's Trust. If you are a Don's Trust member, the Don's Trust vote, the election... 2018 is still open until 11.59 tonight. There are 11 candidates for four positions. You have four votes. 
you do not have to use all four votes, but you have four votes. OK, so if you want to use all four votes, you can use them. Eleven candidates, ninewirespodcast.org. Have a scroll down the front page. You'll find all our interviews with a manifest link to their manifestos as well if you want to have a last minute um, revision of who you want to vote for. I voted. I put my vote in this week, Stu. Good, good. I took a little bit of time because I had some thinking to do about which candidates I wanted to go for. So I gave myself a bit of time, but my vote has gone through. Please do that if you have the opportunity. Other than that, all that's left to say now is thank you for joining us. Alexa Bliss, bag first, milk last. We will speak to you again next week. Sometimes when I do that sign off, I feel like I'm actually on the radio. Like I'm trying to, it's like I'm trying to squeeze it all in before they cut. It's like why? It's a podcast. I've not learnt this. We've only been doing it like nearly three and a half years. <laughs>